Hello again, friends. Today we're going to have another look at this ANVRC92, but specifically we're going to look at uh, how the GPS portion of the system works, and we'll look briefly at uh, the mapping system, um, very briefly, which I've made other, other videos on. But there's some kind of unique ways um, that GPS is used in this system uh, and that is not really not intuitive. And uh, it took a while in, in asking some smart people uh, about this to really learn how to do it, and so I thought I'd share it with you guys. The first thing we have to do is connect up the antenna. Uh, this is the antenna. It's a little magnetic jobby, and uh, I think it takes about five volts. Trimble. This happens to be a trimble. And uh, here's the um, here's the other end of it. It's an SMA. SMA connectors are not all that robust. A little bit surprising they would use that in a military setting. Here is the SMA connector on the back of the VAA. And what I've done here is I use a little right angle uh, SMA to S male to female adapter. And the reason I like to do that is because as I play around with this thing, install it, uninstall it, I'm going to be making a lot of matings and unmatings. And since these uh, SMA adapters are only rated for I don't know how many, but not an infinite number of mating cycles um, that I thought instead of uh, potentially wearing out the connector on the radio, uh, I would just potentially wear out the connector on this elbow and um, yeah, so otherwise. Okay, and then the, the last thing we've got to do in the back here is connect up the enhanced control display unit and we're connecting it to the bottom connector, which is the bottom radio, radio A. Uh, but of course I could have connected it to the top connector as well uh, for radio B. All right, so now that we've got the GPS connected and the, uh, the KDU, um, enhanced KDU, uh, let's take a look at how that GPS signal gets into the radio. Uh, so in the back we've got this uh, connector here, sort of a delta D sort of style. And in the bottom right, if I can get in there close, you can see one of the contacts is a coaxial contact. The rest are just, uh, you know, more typical uh, contacts. And this is how the GPS enters the radio uh, as a coaxial, as an RF signal. Uh, remember that the GPS antenna uh, needs, I think it's about five volts that it needs uh, to operate the internal um, amplifiers, and then it feeds the RF signal, the amplified RF signal from the antenna into this coax contact. So uh, then when you look at the radio, you can see that, uh, at least on the top, you can see it pretty clearly, there is this uh, mating contact. And now here's the first thing that drove me kind of crazy trying to figure out why I couldn't get this working. Uh, the top contact, let's see if I could zoom in on this. The top contact does not actually, the, the top connector here has no RF contact. So this is a blank, uh, a blank position in the body of this connector. There's nothing here, and I didn't realize this. And so, because, so what happened was, of course, I was putting a radio in there and not understanding why it wasn't uh, working. Uh, and so uh, one of the first things I did was to check. Uh, I, you know, I, I checked this, if you can see it here on the rear, the voltage coming out to the, to the GPS antenna uh, to see if there was voltage, and there wasn't. And that's because, here's the, here's the trick, only the bottom radio has, I don't know if I can quite get in there, only the bottom radio has the coaxial connector. So the coax antenna from the rear of the VAA connects to the bottom, uh, the, the bottom contact, the bottom connector. Here you can see a little bit better the bottom bay, which is the A radio. And I don't think there's probably not enough light to really 
uh, get in there. Yeah, maybe there is. Uh, that's probably too much. Well, there, I don't know if you can quite see it, but there is in fact a contact there. So it's the bottom radio, the A radio, GPS A, that is the only radio that connects to the antenna. So then you might be wondering, well, how does the top radio get GPS signal? And the answer is, is that the bottom radio decodes the RF and creates, I'm not sure exactly the, the, uh, the serial data stream. It might be NMEA, which is a, a fairly standard serial data stream. I don't know if that's true in this case. And it will send it uh, out of the non-coaxial contacts uh, on that connector, the other, the other contacts, as a serial data stream up to the top bay, the top radio, and that's how that radio gets its GPS data. So let's take a look at this in a little more detail. All right, so now that we've got that uh, set up and explained, let's take a look at how to set up the individual radios and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get the mapping function to work. So let me zoom in here. All right, so we're working on the bottom radio first. And the first thing you've got to do is put the radio into load. Uh, well, actually, I just previously done that. Uh, it's this switch here, so you put it on to, uh, down to load. And we've got to set a, the first thing you have to do is set a CID, a combat ID. This is just a number that you can assign to every radio, uh, every person in your platoon, uh, any, anybody carrying a radio where you need to know the, um, the position of that person. All right, so the first thing we do is we're gonna ch change the combat ID here. Hit CID and clear. And we're gonna put in just a random number, one. And store. All right, uh, we do that to the top radio as well, but we use a different number. We could use something like 0002. And now we got to turn the GPS on. I'll, I'll also mention that the radios have to have uh, a GPS card installed. And um, that's not always the case when you find these on the secondhand market. Uh, and um, you know, that's, that's an important part. So we'll set the GPS, we'll click, uh, which is number five here, GPS. And from off, we're going to use again the change button here and set it to auto. There's also a manual and an off, I'm gonna set it to auto. And if you'll see, there's already a plus, which means it's probably already has, the antenna probably, ha and the radio have already communicated. It has, the, the antenna and the, the, the GPS has a fix, even though I didn't turn it on yet in the system. Let's do that again, you can see what happens when the system's freshly turned on. Okay, I'm gonna switch the radio on. All right, we'll put it in load. And let's see what we have here. So we're gonna to go to uh, GPS. So here, you see it says minus auto, which I can get a little bit closer on that. Minus auto means that it's in auto mode, uh, but it has not yet got a fix from the antenna. And so that, that's how you would expect to see it. Uh, in about five minutes, that minus auto will turn to a plus auto. All right, let's do the same to the top radio. Now remember, the top radio is gonna get its GPS information from the bottom radio. So uh, this will not see, uh, will not go to auto. It'll be in minus auto until the bottom radio gets the full auto and the minus sign disappears. So let's, let's do this one. And we are in load. So we go, again, we have to set a combat ID, set it to two. All right, let's let that time out. Let me zoom in just a wee bit more on that. And now we go to GPS, which is off, and we go to change it to auto. See, now it's already plus auto. That's probably because the bot, because in this time, the bottom radio has already uh, synced. So let's, let's look at the GPS situation. We hit GPS, and sure enough, it is plus auto. So these radios are now ready to go. Um, it's really as simple as that. 
All right, so let's take a look at this is the enhanced control display unit. Uh, and we plug this in, uh, you saw it in the first part of the video. And this has, uh, there, I have other videos that you can review to see how this all works. But what I wanted to show was the map display. Now I've already loaded this CDU with a map of my, the area around my house. Uh, and there's a little USB port that you load the maps in. It's kind of a complex process to create the maps. Someday I'll maybe do a video on that. Um, and so uh, here, we, we, there are various options on the display here, uh, including nav RT display. And so it'll show you the position of the GPS. This is in a military uh, grid square system, not in your typical degrees, minutes, seconds, or tenths. And uh, you, can mo you, can, uh, you can remotely control the radio. This is plugged into the bottom radio, I should mention. Uh, and here's a complete KDU, I'm sorry, a, a keyboard that you can, look, here's the GPS, for example. Oh, radio, I'm oh, sorry. Let's get this radio interface uh, going here. We've got to put this here into remote mode. Totally forgot about that, minor detail. Okay. There we go. So we can look at the GPS here and you can see minus auto. Okay, so this seems to have lost. Let me move this, uh, move this antenna here to a little better place on the table and maybe it'll get a better sync. There we go. Uh, just auto, no plus, no minus auto. And the real neat display of course here is uh, this uh, map display. And if you can see that, it doesn't come out great on the video. That is a map. Uh, you can see my house and there's a little blue dot, which is exactly where the GPS antenna is for this radio. We're on the far end of the house in the attic area. And you can see uh, here is a street uh, and another street here and a lot of trees. And this area definitely is wooded, fairly, fairly well wooded. Uh, and then, yeah, that's it. So please go see my other videos about how to use situa situational awareness and uh, using handheld mobile uh, radios and have everybody display on a, uh, on a map like this and so you can keep track of where everybody is. All right, well, that wraps it up. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video on setting up GPS on your uh, VRC-92. Catch you next time.